What's up, my fellow small business supporters? It's Savvy, your annoying friend who doesn't shut up about the fact that they have a startup. And today I am here with five tips for authors to use when crowdfunding their book. How you can crowdfund your book. First though, in the spirit of crowdfunding, I do want to remind you guys that I have a Kickstarter campaign going on right now and there are only four days left in it. If you see these adorable stuffed animals right here, these are the stuffed animals that you can pre-order on the Kickstarter campaign. They also each have a book that goes along with them. So please be sure to check out the Kickstarter campaign linked in the description below. Now on to crowdfunding. So what is crowdfunding? For those of you who don't know, there are websites like Kickstarter, Indiegogo, GoFundMe, where you can set a funding goal and then you can offer rewards for how much people contribute. So essentially you can use it like a pre-order system. Like like I make a Kickstarter campaign, I say my goal is I want to raise $3,500. And then if you contribute $25 to my Kickstarter campaign, you get a stuffed animal. If you contribute $35, you get a stuffed animal and a book. My first tip for crowdfunding your book is to choose the right platform and a reasonable funding goal. In a way, your funding goal will also determine what platform you want to use. For example, if you use Kickstarter, Kickstarter has an all or nothing platform, which means that if you do not raise your goal of how much money you you want to make by the deadline, you do not get any of the money. Now, why would anyone want to do that? Here's why. When I was first starting the Forever Home Friends, I didn't have the money to invest in any of the startup costs that I needed. So if I had set my funding goal, my funding goal when I started the business in 2017 was $7,000. If I started that funding goal, and then only raised like $3,000, but everybody's card was getting charged because I was getting the money regardless of how much I raised, I would then be responsible and on the hook for providing people with the products that they pre-ordered. However, because I didn't reach the funding goal, I didn't have enough money to produce those things in the first place. So in my case, it was actually useful for me to have an all or nothing approach because it's like, if I don't raise that $7,000, I can't make the products. I don't have the money to put into it. On all or nothing platforms like that, if you don't raise the amount of money, nobody's card gets charged. So when people pledge to it, they pledge and then their card gets charged if that amount of money actually gets raised. However, if you want to take pre-orders for something, but you already have the money available to cover all of your initial costs, and you just want those pre-orders to cover like individual printing costs or something like that, you can use something like Indiegogo or something like GoFundMe because those websites do not require you to make all of the money in order to receive any of the money. That's where deciding on your funding goal also comes in. You don't want to make your funding goal so high that you're not able to to reach it, but you also don't want to make it so low that when you do receive the money, you're not able to actually deliver on what you promised. So what this requires is doing a lot of math. I pull out my Forever Home Friends bullet journal. Here is my plushy Kickstarter 2019 section where I figured out my funding goal. This is my page that says math across the top. I figure out how much each stuffed animal is going to cost to produce. I figure out how much I'm going to owe the manufacturer for my bulk order, what their minimum size bulk order is depending on materials, how much money I already have in my business account that I can put forward, how much I'm going to need from other people. I do a bunch of math and then I figure out what is the best funding goal for me. So for this current Kickstarter, I came up with $3,500 based on cost of the prototypes, cost of getting the minimum quantities manufactured. My second tip for crowdfunding your book is to find avenues for publicity. In this case, you'll want to think about what themes does my book cover beyond just the fact that it's a book. Because of course you can find traditional book publicity avenues like book blogs and book YouTube, but the book stuff is only gonna go so far. Because there are people out there who might be interested in the themes of your book but are not that involved in the indie book community or the online book community, you're gonna need to find some ways to reach out to other people who are sharing the interests of the topics your book cover. So, in my case, that was dogs. My books are all based on the stories of real rescue dogs. So what I did was I reached out to animal shelters. The first shelter I reached out to was a live rescue in Chicago because two of our dogs, Chewy and Kringle, both come from that rescue. So their volunteers, their staff, everyone who works with them know these dogs and would be very interested in helping bring books and stuffed animals to life of these dogs. So I reached out to them, I collaborated with them on social media, did some cross promotions, and that was wonderful. And then I started thinking outside the box a little bit more. For example, I had a cool shirt that I like to wear that has little dogs all over it and I remember that when I was emailing their customer service about a shipping issue that I had with it, we ended up getting in a conversation where we sent each other pictures of our dogs and I thought, oh, this clothes 
clothing company are also dog people, so I should do a cross promotion with them. So that is exactly what I did. I sent them pictures of myself wearing their clothes on Instagram, and then they linked to my Kickstarter and promoted it and tagged me in it because I was promoting their clothes while they were also promoting the fact that I was doing something to help dogs, which was another interest of theirs. Basically, just finding every possible avenue for publicity, seeing what those themes are in your book, and then finding ways to tie that into as many different partnerships as possible. My third tip is to make a video. When you're using Kickstarter or other crowdfunding platforms, they don't always require you to make a video in order to launch your campaign. Making a video is super important. It causes people to get much more engaged with your process and you get to show off everything. A lot of us here are booktubers and author tubers. Many of you guys who are watching this video found this through the booktuber author tube community, which means that you are probably a video creator as well. And even if you're not a video creator, there are cheap and easy ways to make a video for yourself. For me, that was one of the most fun parts of my process because I'm a booktuber, as you guys know, so I love making videos, I love editing videos, I love doing that kind of stuff. But even if you're not a video person, find some of your friends who are into videos, find someone to collaborate with. There are free editing programs that you can download. In my case, I use Lightworks because I don't wanna pay for the Adobe Creative Suite, so I use Lightworks, which is very similar to Adobe Premiere. But make sure you have a video. I highly recommend videos be like, one to four minutes long. You don't want to go too short or too long. If it's too short, you won't cover enough information. And if it's too long, people will stop watching and they'll get bored. Another important reason to make a video is that you want to show your audience that you're a real person. Believe it or not, there are bots on crowdfunding campaigns. When you go on camera and you say, hi, I am the actual creator of this product. Here I am. You are making a personal connection with the audience and you are showing them that you are a real person who exists and is passionate about this. My fourth tip is to make your page both informative and transparent. When you're creating your crowdfunding campaign, you don't want to be too vague with things. You don't want to say, I need this money so that I can produce this book. Well, what do you need it for exactly? How much of your money is going to go to printing costs? What math did you do to come up with this funding goal? How much is going to go to hiring an illustrator if that's something you're doing? How much is going to go to cover design? How much is going to go to marketing and publicity? How much are you setting aside of this goal for paying your income taxes? Figure that out and break it down. It doesn't have to be exact, but break it down the best you can so that your audience knows that you have an actual plan for where this money is going. I've seen too many Kickstarter campaigns in my time that say, I want to make a movie. I need $50,000 because movies are expensive to make. And then it doesn't go into any detail about how much is going to be going to equipment rentals, how much is going to be going to permits and reserving places and paying actors and getting food for the set. It doesn't even break down what's going to where. And it makes you think this person just set an arbitrary goal because they want to make a lot of money from this. And that does not bode well. That does not put my trust in them as a creator. So be as transparent as possible about where all of your money is going. Your audience, especially if they're going to be pledging money to you, will want to know where everything is going and how their money is going to be spent to help make this project a reality. My fifth tip for crowdfunding your book, which is probably the most important step, is to tell literally everybody about it. This is not the time to be shy. This is not the time to be humble. But with one caveat, you don't want to be the person who is just spamming everyone like, hey, will you give me money? Hey, will you give me money? Like nobody likes that person, right? So you want to find a way to tell everybody about it in a way that will also interest them. Reach out to every friend you have, every relative you have, every person you've ever known, but do not spam them. I cannot stress enough how much you do not want to spam people. So if someone doesn't answer your message when you say, hey, how are you doing? I hope everything's going well. We should catch up. I don't know if you saw, but I only have this many days left in my Kickstarter campaign, and if I don't raise the money, I get none of it. If you are interested at all in pre-ordering anything, here's the link. You say a message like that, if they don't respond, you don't follow up and say, hey, did you see this message? Hey, I only have two days left. No, you send one message to every person you know, and if they respond and say, yeah, you know, that looks cool, but I don't have the money to contribute right now, but let's catch up and talk about how we're doing, then you catch up and talk about how you're doing. If you see my video about getting put in Facebook jail, you will see why you want to spread this out, especially if you're going to talk to people over Facebook Messenger. You're going to need to um, start this process early so that you can spread it out and Facebook won't block you from their platform. Emails, 
messages, texts, all of that. Tell everybody you know about it once. The one exception to that is if you have built an email list and you're gonna send out email updates to people who have signed up for your email list through either like a previous book you've made or through a blog subscription or something like that, you can send out periodic updates about it to them and let them know more than once because that's like a mass email. That's not you like spamming one person and making them uncomfortable. But definitely try to do daily social media posts on this on all of your platforms. I don't put daily videos up about it on YouTube, but I do daily posts on my Twitter, my Facebook, my Instagram, all of that about my Kickstarter that I'm running right now. And I do mention it in every YouTube video that I've put up for this month. So those are my five tips for crowdfunding your book. I hope this was useful to you. And if you guys have any questions about my process of crowdfunding, or if you're interested in crowdfunding and wanna know more, please feel free to leave me a comment below. Please feel free to reach out and ask any questions. My Forever Home Friends Kickstarter currently has four days left in our campaign. You can pre-order one of these cute plush stuffed animals. They're so huggable. You can also pre-order any of the books that go along with them. You can get a set, a book and a stuffed animal together. They're so much fun. And my link to that is in the description below. I will see you guys again soon. And in the meantime, please remember to support small businesses. What's up, my fellow small business supporters? It's Savvy, your annoying friend who doesn't shut up about the fact that they have